And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at a game called Cursed Court. Now this is a game from Atlas Games. It's two to six players, 30 to 45 minutes. It's from a game designer and artist. I had not heard much about them before. I didn't know much about this game. In this game, you are a minor noble trying to influence the major nobles who influence uh, the king, or I guess they control the land, or I'm not sure exactly what you're trying to do in this game. You're just trying to get the most points by controlling people. It's an area control game with a little bit of bidding involved, has really cool poker chip type style pieces. Let me show you them. So in this game you have nine major nobles that are on the board. You have a small deck of 36 cards that has four of each of these nobles listed here. We have the duke, the queen, the jester, the king, the, the priestess, etc. So what's going to happen at the beginning of each year, there are three years of the game, a card is going to be dealt not to players but between each player. So let's say there's four players in the game, so this one would be between me and Alice, and I might have one over here between me and Susan, and then between Alice and Bob, and between Susan and Bob. So I can look at these two cards, so I see there's the Duke on this card, and I see there's the, the courtesan, courtesan on this card. So I know two cards that are in the game. Now, the, the year then has four seasons, and each season, at the beginning of the season, we're going to reveal one card. Here we have the Priestess, and we set it next to the board. Now each player has 20 chips of their color, along with four crowns. Also they have a scoring marker, that's just to keep track of your score. So starting with the first player, uh, which is denoted by this big marker here, you can bet on anything. If you bet on one of these nobles, you are saying there is at least one of that card in the game. If you bet on a location, like the chapel here, let's zoom up, that location, you'll notice it has four in a corner. You're saying, if you bet here in a chapel, you're saying all four of these characters are going to be in this round. If you vote on the procession down here, you're saying the three in that column. So we have columns and rows and diagonals and different groupings of three or four. Now, when you put out your crown, you can also put out your coins. Coins are used to control areas. They're not worth points at the end of the game. They are not tiebreakers. They're nothing. They're simply to take control of an area. So when I go to an area, I could put just one person like that, but someone else can displace me as long as they place at least one chip. So let's say the red player displaces me with two chips. Now I can displace the red player, but I would need to at least double their number. So maybe I say, I'm gonna, I need at least four, but I'm gonna go with six. This is returned to the red player. Later on, if the green player plays 12 chips, he can displace me. He would need to play at least 12 chips. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. If green does this and spends 12 chips here, no one is going to be able to displace green. Why? Because you can't double 12. Everyone only has 20 chips. Which means if you play 11 chips anywhere, you will definitely control and win that region. So that's interesting in one aspect here. You're going to be putting these chips down and getting them back. Do you want to put down a lot of chips in the beginning or a few chips? Once everyone has one marker on the board, so in a four-player game, let's say we all have one marker on the board like this, then we would add another card to the public display. And then everyone puts out another marker on the board in different places. And then we would add a third one and then a fourth one. Once everyone has four markers on the board, we have these four cards, we take the other cards that were between players and we sort them out. Now we look at the number of cards for each character. If you're on a character and there's at least one of that character's card, you get a point. If there's two, you get two points. If there's three, you get five points. And if there's all four, you'll get eight points. I've yet to see all four show up in the game, but I've definitely seen three before. For all the locations, you're simply going to score four or three points if it happens, depending on how many tiles. So all four of these here would be worth four points, while if all three of these guys are in the game, they'd be worth three points. Now all three of them would have to show up. So this one here, for example, the wedding, requires there to be the priestess, the duke, and the queen. So we look, there's at least one duke card, there's the priestess, um, but there's no queen cards, so that one does not work. 
and that's how you're going to do it. Once everything has been scored with the scoring track on the bottom, you pull off all the pieces, everyone gets all 20 of their chips back, whether you used them or not, and then you start another round by dealing cards out to everyone. You're going to reshuffle the entire deck, unless you're playing with a variant, so the same cards could be there or not. After three years, whoever has the most points is the winner. The artwork on the board is pretty good. I really like it. It's very easy to tell these people apart. They have nice color backgrounds. They look really cool. I mean, some of them look a little bit like they're out of their time. Like, she looks like someone from today dressed up as a queen, and this person looks like someone from the 70s or so on. And, that, and, it, and I, I'm not totally understanding why the assassin is a major noble. It seems like he would be a hidden noble. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, they look good. The chips are great. You're going to have problems with people sitting there you know, doing this with their chips, just constantly playing with the chips. But having these chips, these crowns, which incidentally come in two pieces, you have to put them together like this. Um, these are in the running for the absolute worst piece to ever stand on in a, w with your bare foot. But lots of crowns, lots of colors. The whole thing is very bright and colorful. The insert to the game has spots to put all the chips and the different pieces, holds everything very easily. This is a quick game to set up. Now, I might consider, the cards are good quality, but they are black bordered. I might consider, after playing this, and I played this several times already, you can see there's some nicks and stuff on the cards, putting these in sleeves, I normally don't recommend that, but it is important that you don't know what cards are in play at any given point. But overall, excellent components. Now I'm really enjoying this game. This game has been so much fun to, to test out and play. I, I've tried it, I think, with every player count except two. And I'm not sure how two would work. I, th I think I prefer it with more players, but four was a really good number too. But I, four, five, six, that's a really good sweet spot. Three's okay. I'm not sure I want to play it with two, but I really, really like it. Um, and what's neat about this game, besides the components and sitting there messing with the chips, is just how to utilize those chips. Because after a while, you know, you're, you're trying to figure out, okay, so I bid, and at the end of the round, how much money do I get for the next round? 20. You always have 20. So you have to figure out what to go for and when. There's definitely bluffing involved in this game. You're going to sit there and, you know, someone will put a token on the, on the queen, and I'm like, oh, the queen's in the game? All right, I'm going to bid on this because I know the other two people in that line are in the game, so I'm going to be heavy on that but the queen might not even be in the game. That person might be going there hoping someone else knocks them off. And in fact, there's a variant where you can play with, you mark the bottom of one piece and one of your pieces is solely a bluffing piece. It doesn't even count. So you can put that out and then people will try to outbid you and it doesn't mean anything anyway. But I, 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 I like the bluffing aspect to it, but it's just interesting to watch how you bid. I can take anything on the board with 12 or with 11 chips, right? I can take anything. But sometimes I'll do some, you know, you're, you're trying to guess everything else. Like, let's say I put eight chips somewhere. Eight chips can be outbid, but it has to be outbid with 16 chips. Are you willing to pay 16 chips to outbid me there? And maybe I am just bluffing you in that whole regard. Oh, the whole, the way the whole chip system works is really neat. And when you're outbid, you get those chips back. So at the beginning, some people throw out no chips at all. And they're going to get bounced back. That's fine. Then they'll come back with chips to take what they really want. And you're watching how everyone else bids. And you have this information known. I mean, I played in one game where both the cards I saw were the same thing. And then a third one of that person showed up. Well, boom, I know she's worth a lot. That's five points. Is that worth all my chips? Because if it's not worth all my chips and I put out less, someone else might have seen one of those cards in the face. If they know there's two in the mix, they might outbid me. And is five points worth wasting all my chips on when my other places may not get any points at all? Oh, near the end of the game, especially in a five or six player game, you don't use every spot on the board. You, you, I think in a six player game, there's three spots no one goes on. But there's definitely going to be spots that probably don't score. Although I've played in games where all nine people showed up in the cards. Six plus four is ten, yeah. Nine people showed up, which means every card scored, which is really fascinating. But that doesn't happen very often. And you're trying to figure out which people haven't shown up. When you're looking for that elusive three of a kind, or uh, to me, the, the ja jackalope, the four of a kind, I still haven't seen that yet. But the fact that they're there, and there's laughter, and there's involvement as you go on this... Now, I've seen the game sometimes drag down a little because you're like, oh, where do I go and what do I outbid if I go here? And the turn order can be a little wonky sometimes because each season you go to everyone has some on the board. So let's say it's season three and 
on turn one, Mandy knocks off one of my groups, and on turn two, Suzanne knocks off another one of my groups, and then it comes back to me. I put one of my groups back on, and then everyone else has their things on the board. I put another group back on, comes back around, and now I'm gonna put my third one back on, and then I knock someone else off, and then they go. And it can take a while, but eventually, because of the way the chips are set up, the bids do end. And at the end, that scoring, when you reveal the cards, and there's, ah, there's no assassin. I thought there was an assassin for sure. That stuff is just great fun. So you're mixing together here a very easy to teach game. Although teaching with the chips and understanding how it works, I found that it's easy just to say, let's play through the first season. As soon as the first season's done, boom, I have yet to have anyone not understand it. So that's, it's easy to teach though, other than, especially by just playing it. Secondly, looks fantastic on the table. People can come by and be like, what is all this plastic? And thirdly, it's just plain out fun. An excellent game, a big surprise for me, Cursed Court. Dice Tower Judgment, excellent! Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.